Hey guys, thanks for tuning in to this week's uh, episode of Cigar Chat. Um, in this episode, I just wanted to make a quick little episode and thanking the guys from uh, Cigar Coop, you know, Bear and uh, and Coop and all the guys there um, for the beautiful words they had to say about our cigars. Um, you know, at the PCA show, they went and they interviewed me and uh, that, was a lot, that was an honor for me. I had a great time. And at the same time, uh, you know, just great bunch of guys. And um, they had some really beautiful words to say about our cigars and about what we're doing with the company. So a special shout out to them. And um, I hope you guys have a great Labor Day weekend. And I just wanted to go ahead and uh, show you guys the video. So stay tuned. And uh, thanks for watching. One that, be honest, I have to thank you, Bear, for introducing us was Seraphim Nakuba. Absolutely. Because I literally had no idea they existed until you said, hey, we need to go by and stop and talk to them. And I left thoroughly impressed when we left that interview. And the cigars that I've sampled, man, there wasn't a damn dud in them. I, I didn't smoke any. It was a dud. And and I don't know it's because now that I'm aware, I've seen them pop up everywhere. He wrote like, orders. I'm he wrote orders because he wrote a lot of orders. This guy, yeah. yes, I'm yeah. seeing shops bring him in, and I'm seeing I'm seeing them on social media. People smoking them, and and raving about them. I mean, to me, that was an awesome, awesome uh, company that came in and really won the show. I mean, he did exactly what needed to be done. And we came in small, little, little, very small booth, but made a massive impact, I thought. And I cannot wait to get my hands on some more of those cigars, to be honest, because most of them are right in my wheelhouse. And I know like history nerds like you and I are bear that the stories behind these cigars are oh, freaking great. awesome. Yeah. I love the story. About, and we all talk about, the, you know, all the 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 stories or romanticism about some of this stuff but like the his stories are they're legit you know it's not some ethereal kind of thing that people are associating with this this brand they're coming out with or whatever like he's got historical stuff tied into every brand he's coming out with and that drew me as well not just how the quality of the cigars which are fantastic and the flavor and most of them are in my wheelhouse, which I really appreciate, right? But the stories behind them and how we explain them all, I mean, honestly, people, if you have not seen any of our PCA videos, that one is the one you got to see because it was my favorite one just because his passion came through with, on through that too. I mean. I will put the I, video in the link. so dude, I don't even it. know. I don't know about y'all, but like I almost felt like it was like a, a fourth quarter pep talk and you're down by a touchdown or something. And your coach t- giving <laughs> you that rah-rah speak. Dude, I felt, I was like, damn, that's what I'm talking about. This is how the cigar industry should be. This yeah. is, this is how you do it. Let's go. This is it. Let's, Let's go. go. I want boxes. How many boxes could I get? You know, I mean, that's kind of how I felt yeah. when I left there because his passion really came through. And I, <laughs> I think we captured really well of that video. Yeah. So I, please I, go watch it. And they weren't new releases, but they were new. They were int- but they were really being introduced to a bigger, a bigger audience. Um, they were kind of a, a, a kept secret down in, in the Tampa area. So, and and Bear had heard of Bear. He had reached out to Bear. Jose then reached out to me right before the show, saying, "You got to go see him." And like he's like, um, and the other thing that I was really impressed with Arnold. He took a very grassroots approach to everyone who went to that booth, trying to get to know everybody, right? And I really appreciated that. And, I, and it wasn't just with media people. It was I heard this from other people who visited that booth, how Arnold really just tried, and he didn't put a hard sell on anybody. It was, you know, he was just introducing who he was, and this is what he's bringing to the table. And, and I think he did a fantastic job. Um, I, well, I, I can't disagree with you, Ben, on this. Yeah. I, I think there's a lot of parallels to like him and someone like Howard Gums, right? Like, who, like, they, I mean, from like completely two different sides of the street, mind you. But there's, there's a lot of humility. There's a lot of conversation. There's a lot of excitement. And there's a lot of like, again, like yeah. to your point, like getting to know them as a person and them as, you know, that kind of, that kind of aspect about it. So, 
Um, so I think that's that. That's kind of like this. Maybe that's probably why I'm drawn to both of those guys. I yeah. think they're just they have great stories, and you guys know me. I'm a sucker for it. Yeah. I'm a sucker I, for the story. No, I I totally yeah. agree with that because the way I feel about you know Seraph and the Cuba as how I felt about Howard Gumps last year. Yeah, so I, I'm smoking that right now. I'm smoking the Black Moses right now. I'm onto that, and it's freaking fantastic. This and, cigar is great. So I, the similarities you're bringing up is 100. percent I'm on board. I agree with that 100. percent I got to give Bear a lot of credit on this one too because he, Howard was at the 2021 show, and that was the first time as our team we were there. We didn't go see Howard, and after that show, Bear reached Bear reached out to him right and got to know him. Bear started smoking these cigars, and and he's like, you know, he got the notice. He put him on the show. And then we went to the booth last year and uh, I think it was, we all had a very special visit at that booth. Again, very similar approach. Um, this year, I thought it was great too. Again, Ike, Ike Taylor was there and, and big Leon Cersei was there. Um, Rachel, who also was a part of that. And I just felt they all, and I saw them. And again, I heard with other customers, they were doing the same thing, you know, just taking a grassroots approach to things to get to know people. And a lot of times this is about relationships, this business. So, when you do that type of approach, it works. And it's and it's real. It's real. It's I real. mean, and you root for a guy like that. And maybe I'm not saying I'm not saying and Howard's cigars are good, by the way. Howard, especially the cigars he's getting out of American Caribbean, which I've been very critical of a lot of those cigars. They're very good ones he's getting out of there. It's good it's good stuff. So yeah. Aaron, what about you? Anybody? Well, I would, I, I mean, look, I'm not going to take the, the easy way and, and say I agree with those two. The Seraphim de Cuba, I, you, when um, we were going around in the text post and I smoked it the first time and I, I was like, wow. <laughs> it Barry Duplessis coming to you from PCA 2023 once again, having a seat down with uh, a newcomer to the PCA trade show, but not a newcomer to cigars, a great family tradition. And I'm uh, speaking with none other than Arnold de Serafin uh, of Serafin de Cuba Cigars. Arnold, how are you doing, sir? Barry, thank you very much. I appreciate it. I'm doing great. I'm thrilled that you guys are here doing the video with me. Absolutely. So thank how's you. how's your first trade show treating you? So far, so good. Um, I'd been to the trade show, you know, years ago with uh, some of my friends from Florida Gonzalez, that aren't here this year. Uh, La Tradición Cubana, Luis Sanchez, Miami, good friend of mine as well. So just to be here doing this, dream come true. Very happy. Beautiful, beautiful. I, what I love about uh, your story is just like, a, it's not just uh, it's not just the uh, the family story, but it's individuals in the families. And uh, you know, right now I'm smoking the uh, Seraphine uh, Siri Don Ramon. Uh, which uh, I have told you that was uh, the favorite out of the samples that I had smoked before. And uh, you've got some really unique blends. And what I really like about this is that, yes, this is uh, this is a milder cigar, um, but the, the creaminess uh, that really is balanced out with the really nice subtleties and the spices, and there's a lot of baking spice into it as well. But um, why uh, talk to us a little bit about who this pays homage to. Sure. The, the Seraphin 1942, which is the one you're smoking, was uh, basically the first cigar that we did to create a tribute to my dad, Don Ramon Serafin Sr. Um, he was with me, he was instrumental in the business, worked with me more than 20 years in the business. Um, unfortunately, he passed away uh, 2019, towards the end. And uh, dad was always uh, really crazy about the Connecticut wrappers, and he loved that size. So when it came time to make a cigar, I said, man, what do I make for him? Well, it wasn't that hard. I said, you know what? He loved the, the, whenever a customer would come into the shop, he'd show them the Connecticut. He was so proud about it. So I wanted to create something that I knew he would like. And that was the creation of that cigar. You know, you talk about how long he'd been in the business and everything. And, and uh, you know, we the, the beautiful thing about this industry is that it is multi-generational. And, uh, but what we get lost in a lot sometimes and, and what you're, Starting with Seraphin de, de Cuba, uh, with with the launching of this brand and, and bringing it to the public and everything is that you've been doing that you all have been doing this for a long time and it is also generational as well. Yeah. And uh, um, I uh, I'm really fascinated to explore even more about your story. But let's talk a little bit more about some of the cigars that we have sure. here. Uh, specifically, the we'll do the 19 uh, the 1940 uh, excuse me the 1917. Let's go back to take us back there. 1917 is uh, basically the follow up to Dad Cigar. Um, we named this one as well Don Ramon because it was the same name, my father and grandfather. 
But this one I did for Granddad. Um, what we created here was a Corojo wrapper um, with a you know Cuban style pigtail, and it also has a folded foot, kind of like the old Fumas. And uh, Granddad had a little cigar factory in Central Cuba for many years, just up until the time of the revolution. And um, of course, everything changed after that for everybody, right? But uh, I went to visit him back in 1993. I went to Cuba, and he was still rolling his old cigars. And, and I said, you know what, Grandpa? I said, I'd love for you to make me some cigars to take back to Florida. And it was just a very normal thing. Oh, yeah, that's what you want? Hold on a second. Here, go visit my neighbor three houses down. Tell him the leaves that I need. Brought him back to the house. And in the living room, him and my uncle rolled about 50 cigars. I still say the best, the best cigars I ever had. So at that time, that was really my inspiration. And um, this cigar pays tribute to him in that particular moment. So, you know, um, it, it, it's, it's funny when you talk about, um, you know, a simple moment like that. But, you know... It's it's not always the it's not always the the where um, that uh, that matters, but the where that makes it special. Yeah. And uh, you know, I can imagine you were probably sitting there in a living room watching your family <laughs> roll you cigars. Right there. And uh, I can't imagine what that moment was like. For it was you. magical. And I was only I was only 14 years old, and my father <clears throat> at the time he was in a, in other businesses, and I said, Dad, we gotta somehow get back into the family business. And he said, Yeah, son, we we if you want to do it. I mean, I'm only 14 years old, and I'm already leaning in that direction. And he said, if you want to do it, let's do it. Unfortunately, my mother, her health was not the best. And unfortunately, she passed away in 2003. And that's when he really went 100% into the business with me. And uh, we started developing our own little brands, and mostly local business in the Tampa area. And from that, we've basically, you know, led to all this now. Talk about a couple of the Excuse other me. brands that you brought to market today. A little bit more, well, I guess we would say uh, traditional in the sense of uh, uh, the, the, the packaging and everything. And it's uh, very, you know, it looks very familiar, but yet it's something different. And that's the, the Principe de Gaius. And uh, yeah. um, if I'm mispronouncing that, I apologize. Oh, okay. uh, but you can correct me. But uh, it's uh, it's also a Connecticut shade, similar to this. But uh, right. talk a little bit about uh, that particular brand. Okay. Um, yeah, Prince, uh, I'd love to get one and show it to you if you want to grab one right there behind you. Put this one down here. Show it to the camera. You got it? So this cigar is a very historic cigar, guys. This cigar came out the first time ever, 1853. It was created by a gentleman that you guys might recognize. <coughs> Excuse me. This is the original artwork from that time period. <clears throat> My throat is killing me. Sorry, guys. But it was created by Mr. Ebor, Ebor City. So this cigar... Created in Havana, Cuba, 1853. Mr. Ebor decides to get kind of cozy with the rebels during the Spanish-American War. And basically, he was a Spaniard himself, but he was living in Cuba. So he started giving money to the cause for freedom. The Spanish government didn't like that. He ends up going to Key West. I got to get some water. Excuse me. My throat is killing me today. Unbelievable. Trade show will do that to you. <laughs> And the dryness, you know? <clears throat> anyway, so 1869, he takes the brand to Key West and um, flees, you know, the whole thing in Cuba. And then a few years later, a Spaniard by the name of Gavino Gutierrez and Bernardino Gargol, the Cuban guy, they said to him, uh, well, well, let me backtrack a minute. Those two guys were in New York. And back then, everybody would travel by steamboat. So they come down from New York and stop in Key West. Who do they bump into? Mr. Ebor. 1885 was the year. So he'd already been in Key West for almost 20 years, I think, basically. 15 or 20 years. And uh, Ebor was looking for a place to be able to expand his business. Because Key West was kind of remote at the time. So when he meets these two guys, they, <coughs> excuse me, they said to him, we're looking at this area up in Tampa. They say they grow gua wild guava trees up there. He says, really? I hadn't heard that. He says, can I come with you guys? Sure. So they take a trip up here to Tampa. Oh, up here, up there. Because we're in Las Vegas. But you get the idea. Anyway, goes up to Tampa, buys 40 acres, becomes Ybor City. All that thanks to the Prince of Wales. Interesting thing, though. The brand had been defunct for over 100 years. 
And one day I saw it, the artwork, and Dad and I, we loved all the history. And I said to my father, I said, you know, I'd really love to bring this back. And he said, man, that would be something really amazing. Unfortunately, he didn't see it in his lifetime. But I know he's watching. So I'm really proud to say that we have the cigar back again. And Mr. Ebor's great-grandson, Raphael Ebor, if he sees this, he gave me the blessing of the family to bring it back. Oh, that's so that was really, really big. That's really great. Yeah. It's terrific. You know, Arnold, the one thing that I've really enjoyed watching you as you've kind of reignited this journey for yourself and for your family is seeing how much tribute you pay to the city of Tampa, the state of Florida, because it does hold so much near and dear to you and Beautiful your family's hearts. And uh, it's it's been terrific to see the the last cigar that you've got that you guys have here today is the La Floridana, uh, which is also uniquely shaped. We talked about the one in honor of your grandfather. Uh, talk to us a little bit about this one. So La Floridana is another old Tampa brand. Um, it was actually Mr. Ebor's son, Candido Ebor, was part owner of the company with another Cuban guy named Emilio Pons. And uh, they basically teamed up and started the Floridana Cigar Company back in, I want to say like 1895 or so. And the cigar was being made through different hands, of course, up until 1972. And one day again, I saw the artwork, which is right there. I don't know if you guys could see it right there with the girl and basically <clears throat> what that translates to is the Floridian girl and I just love the artwork and the history behind it and it's funny because I checked the you know the uh, the articles of incorporation and anything I could find and up until 1972 nobody else made it after that so it's defunct as well and I'm thinking to myself Tampa is a beautiful it's such a rich history of cigar making and it was just kind of thrown to the side. It had been forgotten for all these years. And um, I'm just a lover of history, cigar history, Cuban history, of course. And I just wanted to bring all this back. And it's been a hit. You know, you, we've been talking a lot about your father, uh, your grandfather, your family, and like all this rich history that we've been mentioning here today. And I think that uh, what's what's what I can bring to this part of the conversation is that my my father said that told me one time that there were things that his father taught him that. He, because when my grandfather passed away, I didn't ever get to meet him. And he said, there, son, you will get to meet him. The words that I say and the things that I teach you, well, you will learn those lessons. And, you know, as I'm getting older, my father is becoming more and more sick and more and more old. And I know that that's one thing that I will pass along to my sons. Absolutely. And, you know, we get the great privilege of talking about the amazing gift of the you're bringing in the art form of cigars but it's much deeper than that because it's the principles that your father taught you that his father taught him absolutely and it goes back so far and that's why i think that's why the historical significance should never be lost on that and arnold i think that's why um when uh you know coop was mentioning before like when i asked him i said have you heard of this this guy when you reached out to me i was i who is this guy i've never I, heard of this guy I was, but i was immediately i was immediately captivated we get reached out by so many people so many times i'm sure and um i'm honored that you guys are doing this for me thank you very much oh, you, the honors are right, because again i think that the retelling of the retelling of stories and the retelling of history is such a lost art form but it's so important because we can write things down and we can make videos and everything, but there's so much that's passed along in private conversations Definitely. and simple lessons from our from our fathers to, you know, and mothers, of course, to children. And uh, and it's just wonderful to see that. The, the, we'll finish our short conversation here sure. today with the, the, uh, the Florida Tampa, uh, which, is, uh, I mean, my Spanish isn't great. <laughs> You're doing but, fine. Uh, You're that, doing fine. That, uh, the Tampa Flower, so uh, yeah. I think it's a, a good one to end on. So tell us a little bit about this one. You know, Florida Tampa is another legendary Tampa brand. Um, I want to say that one's from about 1886, and again, I just I fell in love with the artwork on that one. It had not been made in many years, and uh, that was actually one of the first ones we did when we started doing this whole project. And what's funny is I never intended to make so many of them, but we just started doing it, and it got really fun. And I said, well, what the hell? Let's let's keep up, keep it going. And I'll tell you guys right now, I have other ones in the in the in the back burner that hopefully I'll be able to release. I don't know if I'll make it to next year's PCA with them. I hope to, but keep an eye out. You know, stay tuned. It'll be They'll be cool ones. It'll be fantastic. See, I love the history that's coming alive right. And before. let me just say this, my friend and brother Carlito Fuente, big supporter, helping me out, mm -hmm. 
and uh, he's very enthusiastic about me bringing all these old Tampa brands back. Mm -hmm. And you know, I'm very happy that he's that he's giving me the blessing too. Tampa guys stick together. We uh, talked absolutely. about this. Absolutely, absolutely. And uh, Coop's got a question for you. Sure. So Arnold, hey, first of all, it's great to have you at the trade show. Now you're making your scars in Florida, right? So you have a, you're doing all your production. And you're at the trade show. What's your plans for growth? Because I'm assuming you're not going to mass produce these things. But what are you looking to do um, as far as growth goes? Well, you know what, Coop, we've already uh, we've already established a little bit of a of a presence in a factory in Jalapa. So we're doing about 30 percent of our production there right now because of that reason. Because you know we just were not able to continue making them all in Tampa all the time. Right. right. So. But I'll tell you what, the quality has remained consistent, and I'm very happy. And I, if it doesn't meet my standards, I will not release it. I'll steal Carlito's uh, phrase: "You can't rush the hands of time." You know. Absolutely. So if they're not ready, they're just not ready. But so far, I've been able to work with you know a few different growers and stuff down there, and we're very happy with uh, with the production. Well, we're so thrilled to stay with you. Thank you so much for taking some all time out. It's my pleasure. And uh, we're, we're really looking forward to and seeing, excited to see the future of Seraphim Digital. Thank you so much. And I'm so. sorry that my voice is kind of hoarse. A lot of talking. The desert out here, you know. The well, these mics are so out. great. No one's going to know. <laughs> so, <laughs> thank wonderful. you. Thank you, Arnold. Appreciate it. There, thank you very much. Cool. Thanks, thank, thank you me. so much, guys. Yeah. Thank you.